The petition is cited to the concluded arguments in the ongoing case before the Supreme Court against Karnataka High Court's judgment which upheld the ban on wearing of hijab by Muslim students in educational institutions. A bench of justices Heman Gupta and Sudhan Chudhulia heard the petitioners for 8 days. Senior advocate Dushan Dave closed the arguments today on behalf of the petitioners. The bench today commenced hearing Solicitor General of India Tushar Mehta for the state of Karnataka. It will continue hearing Karnataka Advocate General Prabhuling Nawadgi tomorrow. Pertinently today, Supreme Court Judge Justice Sudhan Shudhulia orally remarked that the Karnataka High Court should not have gone into the question of essential religious practice. Justice Dhulia also pointed out that the High Court had relied upon a term paper of a student in the judgment. It may be noted that the High Court judgment had referred to an essay titled Veiled Women, Hijab Religion and Cultural Practice 2013 written by Sarah Silinger to hold that hijab at best is a cultural practice in Islam. Disapproving of the High Court going into the essential religious practice test, Justice Dhulia orally remarked during the hearing today and I quote here, High Court should not have gone into it, that is the essential religious practice test. They have relied on a term paper of a student and they have not gone to the original text. Other side is giving another commentary. Who will decide which commentary is right? In response, Solicitor General of India, Tushar Mehta, candidly agreed that the High Court could have avoided going into the essential religious practice issue. However, he added that it was the petitioners who approached the High Court raising the argument that hijab was indeed an essential practice. In this video, we will have a look at all the arguments advanced by Senior Advocate Dushan Dave as well as Solicitor General of India Tushar Mehta in detail as well as the courtroom exchanges that took place. We have also covered in detail in our earlier videos the arguments advanced by the concerned parties and the courtroom exchanges that took place during the prior hearings, the link to which has been given in the description box below. Please do check it out. Dave today argue that the test is not of essential religious practice but of religious practice. In this regard, he relied heavily on the Supreme Court's judgment in the case of Tikya Sri Govandalaji was the state of Rajasthan. In that case, the court had wondered how it could decide what is an essential religious practice if there are two sets of beliefs within a community and had observed that in such cases, the usual test of whether the practice is regarded as essential by the community would not prevail. Elaborating on this argument, Dave submitted today and I quote, Everybody looks at Lord Almighty in different ways. Those who do Lord Ayappa in Kerala, they go in black dress. Look at our Kanwariyas, today they walk with music bands and dancing to Lord Shiva. Everybody has right to enjoy religious freedom in the most personalized way. You don't hurt anyone, that is the limitation to religious right. He further underscored that the essential religious practice test was never a ground for judicial pronouncements and that the essential religious practice test was used only in the context of making a distinction between religious and secular acts. Furthermore, Dave also added that Justice Chandrachur as well as Justice Nariman had taken note of the confusion created by the essential religious practice test in the Indian Young Lawyers Association case, that is a Sabrimala case. Today, Dave also argued that Article 25 of the Constitution, which guarantees the freedom to propagate one's religion, is an article of tolerance. He quoted from the Supreme Court's judgment in the Bijo Emanuel case, wherein it was held that Article 25 is an article of faith in the Constitution, incorporated in recognition of the principle that the real test of a true democracy is the ability of even an insignificant minority to find its identity under the country's constitution. He further argued that the uniform is an unnecessary burden on the majority section of the society as many people don't even have the money to buy a uniform. However, Justice Gupta responded to this by pointing out that the uniform is a leveler to avoid disparity. Your richness or poverty can't be made out from the uniform, the judge remarked today during the hearing. 
Justice Gupta yesterday had questioned Dawe as to what extent can the Constituent Assembly debates be relied upon by the courts to interpret the Constitution. Today again, Justice Gupta remarked that the opinions in the Constituent Assembly debates were individual opinions and inquired further, and I quote, after that they have given us the constitution so are the individual opinions important in response senior advocate dave said that they are important to the extent of understanding the thought process of the constitution framers he also relied upon the keshavananda bharti case where it was held that the constituent assembly debates though not conclusive can throw light upon the intention Justice Gupta then pointed out that the Constituent Assembly had 240 members and each member represented one opinion. Questioning further, Justice Gupta said, and I quote here, can it be taken as a collective view? We have to go by the definition finally given by the Constitution. Davi responded saying that Article 25 is clear and that the Constituent Assembly debates cement that conclusion. Referring to the reasonable restrictions on the rights guaranteed under Article 19, Dave argued that public order is the only ground which comes into play in the present case. Questioning how public order is violated in the present case, Dave argued, and I quote, So this ground is not available to the state. Nobody's peace is violated, safety is violated, and tranquility is violated. How can the High Court say rights are violated? The women want to wear hijab whose rights are violated. Are the students' rights? He also referred to the right to dignity, which is a facet to the right to life under Article 21 of the Constitution to contend, and I quote from his argument, Article 21 has a facet of dignity. Dignity is important in the case. Hijab adds to the dignity of the woman. Like how a Hindu woman covers her head, it is very dignified. To this, Justice Gupta responded, and I quote, The definition of dignified has changed a lot and keeps changing. Dave also reiterated that recent events show that minorities are being attacked in Karnataka and questioned as to what was the need for the state to suddenly bring in this prohibition after 75 years, particularly in view of its earlier circular, which was against the uniform. The bench then asked Dave to restrict to arguments within the scope of the record. Dave also mentioned instances of the Sully Bai and the Bully Bai cases to point out the marginalization of the minority. However, Justice Gupta pointed out that those cases were from Maharashtra and not Karnataka. Referring to a Supreme Court decision which held that an airman cannot keep a beard as part of the Islamic faith, Dave submitted that unlike the Air Force, 11th and 12th standard students are not a part of regimented forces and argued further, and I quote, There the entire stress is on discipline force and air force. 11th and 12th standard students are not part of regimented forces. They are students, they must be in a liberal environment and we are wearing uniform, wearing hijab in the color of uniform. Let us now see what all did Solicitor General of India Tushar Mehta argue on behalf of the state of Karnataka. Today, the SG alleged that until the year 2021, no girl student was wearing any hijab. However, the students were made part of a larger conspiracy by the Popular Front of India and the government would have been guilty of dereliction of constitutional duty had it not acted the way it did, he said further. He argued, and I quote here, so far uniform was being scrupulously followed. Nobody was insisting for wearing hijab or saffron shawls. In 2022, a movement was started on social media by Popular Front of India. There were continuous social media messages, start wearing hijab. This was not a spontaneous act by few children. They were part of larger conspiracy and children were acting as advised. Justice Gupta then asked if any charge sheet has been filed in this regard. The Solicitor General responded in the affirmative. Refuting Dave's arguments on the marginalization of the minority community, the Solicitor General said that the arguments are far-fetched. He said that the government had to release the impugned circular in the interest of the public order. Justice Dhulia then asked the Solicitor General 
what was this public order situation? He responded saying that students were protesting saying they want to wear the saffron shawl in retaliation and contended further and I quote here, there were agitations, students were protesting outside the gate saying we want to wear hijab. There was saffron shawl wearing students. We are referring to both hijab and saffron. In the circular, it is not that one community will be refrained from wearing one particular apparel. All students must wear the uniform prescribed. The circular is religion neutral. Arguing that hijab is not an essential religious practice, the Solicitor General said that there is no assertion by the petitioners that wearing of hijab is a practice from time immemorial or that it is so compelling that if it is not worn, they will be thrown out of the religion. Comparing the hijab with the Sikhs Kara or Pagri, the SG argued, and I quote again, the practice must be so essential like in case of Sikh, Kara, Pagri, etc. You cannot think of a Sikh without them at any part of the world. There was no averment by the petitioners that the practice started with the religion itself. Practice must be shown to be coexisting with the religion itself. Practice must be shown to be compelling. No pleadings by petitioners on this. He also added that there are constitutionally Islamic countries such as Iran where women are fighting against hijab and thus hijab may be a permissible or an ideal practice but it is not a religious practice. Today Justice Dhulia pointed out that the petitioners are willing to comply with the uniform and that they wanted to wear the hijab of the same colour. He cited the example of how a child may wear a muffler to school. The Solicitor General responded to this by saying that there cannot be a dress showing religious identity when one is in a secular institution and contended further and I quote from his arguments here, there cannot be dress showing religious identity when I am in a secular education. Suppose Bar Council of India tomorrow prohibits wearing of tilak is not allowed, it will have to go and tilak is not part of essential religious practice. Thank you. This is Aratra Kabhomik for Live Law. Keep watching Live Law for more such updates. If you like our content, please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.